Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight we are on grade level four, module six, lesson number five. And tonight we will be modeling the equivalence of tenths and hundredths using the area model and place value disks. So I'm going to go through about four different problems tonight from tonight's homework as a way of trying to help you out. And hopefully that'll be enough to get you going if you need, if you need to get unstuck and get on with the rest of your homework. So let's take a look at a couple of those problems. Problem number one asks us to find the equivalent fraction using multiplication or division. Shade the area models to show the equivalency and record it as a decimal. So let's see, let's take a look at this first one. So we have what starts off as four tenths and we are gonna multiply the numerator, numerator and denominator by some number and we are gonna end up in hundredths. So you know what, let's just start with the four tenths because it looks like our model is set up here first in tenths. I'm gonna go ahead and shade in four tenths just so I understand what I'm thinking about. All right, there we go, so there's four tenths. And now how do we get from that point over to this point? Well, it looks like they took each of our tenths, right? If we had a tenth here, a tenth here, a tenth here, and a tenth here. Um, in fact, actually, let me go ahead and shade that as we get, again, just, so, just to illustrate it. It looks like they took each of our tenths and they divided it up again in 10 pieces, right? So this one, this one piece, this one tenth, got divided up by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 more pieces. So if we, when we do that kind of division, they divide our tenth into 10 pieces, and that gives us 10 times as many pieces, because this is, of course, multiplication and division is inverse operations. So it looks to me like they took each of those and they gave us 10 times as many pieces by dividing it by 10. So it looks to me like we would have ended up with 40 hundredths. Now I could go ahead and count each one of these individual ones, but I could also just skip count and say, look, here's 10, there's 20, there's 30, there's 40, that gives me 40 one hundredths, right? And if we get to the point where we know that it's 40 one hundredths, we can also express this as a decimal because our decimal will tell us that 40 one hundredths is the same as this, right? Zero and a decimal and four zero, right? Uh, because we have this in the tenth spot and we have nothing in the hundredth spot, but of course we could uh, decompose these four tenths into hundredths and make 40 hundredths. And we can see that in our graph because we see this number, 40 one hundredths, 40 shaded blocks out of 100 blocks. Awesome, let's take a look at another problem. Problem two asks us to complete the number sentences, shade the equivalent amount in the area model, drawing horizontal lines to make hundredths. Let's take a look at 2B. We have 82 hundredths, and that is the same as how many tenths and how many hundredths. Oh, I remember this from the previous lesson. We can break down 82 hundredths into 8 tenths, right? That's the number here. And, sorry, let me erase that. And uh, 2 one hundredths, right? 2 right here. 8 tenths and 2 hundredths. And in decimal form, that would be 8 tenths and 2 hundredths would be, let's see, there's the tenth spot and there's the hundredth spot. And in fractional form, 8 ten, eight eighty two hundredths would be literally 82 over 100, right? 82 one hundredths. And, you know, let me do one more thing here, which is let's do our area model. Let's see. Um, we're going to need hundredths, and all we see right now are tenths. So I'm going to get out my black pen, and I'm going to go narrow so I can see if I can try to fit in 10 lines. 10 lines. Let's see. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oop, I got a little... And let's see, I need to shade in 8 tenths and 2 hundredths. So I'm going to switch to my blue pen here and go a little fatter. Um, let's see, I need to shade in all of this, right? That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's 8 tenths and 2 one hundredths. So I'm just going to shade in oop, like that, right? That is 82 one hundredths, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tenths, and one, two, one hundredths, or eighty-two one hundredths. Eighty-two of those tiny blocks out of a hundred. Awesome. Let's take a look at one more. 
Problem 3 asks us to do a little bit of a different exercise. We're going to circle hundreds to compose as many tenths as you can. Okay, complete the number sentences, represent each with a number bond as shown. All right, so they've done the number bond part. Let's see if we can figure this out. Um, let's see, first of all, how many hundreds are, hundreds are there in this? Let's see, in these disks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 hundreds. So we have 14 hundreds. Let's see, can we group... 10 of these and make a tenth. I think we can. Let's see if we can do that. We'll bundle all those together. Those 10 hundredths would make us one tenth, right? And that would leave us with just these other four hundredths still remaining. Well, that makes sense. So four, 14 one hundredths is the same as four tenths, I'm uh, sorry, one tenth and four hundredths. Let's see if that squares with what they have over here in the number bond. Yeah, they have fourteen hundredths broken down into one tenth. Oh, that's right. That's this one. That's the one tenth. And the four one hundredths. And that's this four. All right. That looks pretty good. It looks like we've successfully composed or bundled uh, those hundredths, those ten hundredths into a single tenth. And we've done that both here in unit form and we've done that over here in a number bond form. Let's take a look at one final problem tonight. Number four asks us to use both tenths and hundredths number disks to represent each number. Write the equivalent number in decimal, fraction, and unit form. Oh boy. All right, well, let's skip ahead to part C. Sorry for that interruption from young Bucky. Um, let's take a look at C. We are asked to look at 41 hundredths, 41 hundredths here, and express it in all these different forms. So 41 hundredths, well, the most obvious thing that we can do is we can express it in fractional form. 41 out of 100 is 41 hundredths. Um, and that's the same as literally 41, oops, 41 hundredths. Sorry, this gets a little confusing. I'm going to draw a black line in there to separate our answers. And we could do that in, let's see, uh, place value disks. Place value disks, let's see. It looks to me like we've got some tenths. It looks like we've got four of them. So I'm going to draw that as 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, right? Those would be my place value disks. You know, I noticed in the book, the book says 0 0.1. Sure. Okay, fine. I'll go with what they say. And then, let's see, how many hundredths do we have? Oh, it looks like we just have the one, right? Just got that one hundredth. So here, let's go ahead and we'll do one more place value disk. 0 0.01. There's our hundredth disk. So this would be four tenths and one one hundredth. And that's actually how we would write it in unit form. I run out of space here, but I would write this as four tenths and one hundredth. All right. So now we've done that as a fraction. Up here, we've done that as uh, in hundredths, right? In unit form here, we've broken that down in unit form here, and we've done it as place value disks. We've expressed 41 hundredths in a bunch of different ways. That's the last problem we're going to do tonight, and I think that gives you enough, enough equipment to work on 4A, 4B, and 4D, as well as the other homework from this set. I hope you have another, a nice evening, and I welcome you back again next time on Mr. Kung Has Problems. Thanks.